Theodore Teddy Waltz is the CEO, owner, and master of ceremonies of a nightly gambling cruise ship operating out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. For Teddy, his life at sea is a dream come true, charming passengers with songs and stand-up comedy every night while raking in every dollar they spend in his casino. But unfortunately for Teddy, on tonight's cruise, his luck is about to run out. When a horrifying injury turns Teddy's night in the spotlight into a trip to the morgue. But how did Teddy die? Was it an accident? A gambling argument gone wrong? Or a cold-blooded murder at sea? June 15, 2012. Passengers are excited for a night of gambling and entertainment on board a five-hour pleasure cruise. At over 308 feet long, with space for over 500 people, the nightly cruise is a chance for them to get out on the water and enjoy themselves. The ship is owned and operated by Theodore Teddy Waltz who also performs as the main stage entertainment every single night. While Teddy warms up backstage, it's Teddy's wife and business partner, Veronica Waltz, who keeps things running smoothly. Teddy and his wife actually owned their own cruise ship. Veronica was the brains and Teddy was the entertainment. Teddy's a consummate entertainer. He's the lifeblood of the ship. He's why everybody comes. So they love his humor. They love his entertainment. He's really what gives it that spark. The Waltz business model is officially labeled as a pleasure cruise, offering nightly five-hour trips out to the Atlantic Ocean. Ostensibly, the cruises are actually trips to nowhere. This is so they can transport passengers into international waters where they're allowed to gamble under different rules. To entertain the guests as the ship travels to international waters, Teddy Waltz puts on an hour-long show worthy of the Vegas Strip. For Teddy, sailing the seas with the love of his life and taking the stage every night is a dream come true. Teddy would go around to each table, cracking jokes and making people laugh. This was part of his character. He just really loved to see people having fun. I went on a bunch of these cruises. It was actually a lot of fun because you'd see him all the time, whether it's hanging out with him or you go check him out in his you know, live shows and stuff like that. Teddy is an entertainer. Boat's his, this is his business. It's something he's done all his life. Uh, he's a showman. Even though Teddy seems to be all fun and games, that's not quite true. He's a really hard worker. He started at the lowest level of the cruise industry and worked his way up to owning his own boat. Eventually, Teddy's gifts would give him the chance in the spotlight he desperately craved. Teddy meets Veronica Simone, working as a newly hired crew manager. 
Teddy and Veronica were the classic story of love at first sight. He had that entertaining spirit. She was the brains behind the operation. They balanced themselves out very well, and they ended up getting married just a year after they met. They always had a great relationship. I never noticed any problems with them or anything like that. They were always great together. It was very nice to be around them. Ten years later, Teddy and Veronica buy their own ship and set sail together as business partners and husband and wife. After Teddy's show finishes and the boat has entered international waters, he lets the crew and passengers know it's time to stop the ship and start gambling. A gambling cruise isn't the easiest thing to pull off. There's lots of pieces that have to be in place. You have to have the necessary amount of money, you have to have plenty of security, and you have to have cameras to make sure no one is cheating. As the guests play cards, Veronica manages the ship's staff and security behind the scenes, while Teddy goes from table to table, making customers happy. But one guest, Florida resident Bill Wellesley, isn't happy at all. He's already lost most of his money and yelling that the ship's car dealer cheated him. Gambling that takes place on a cruise ship is subject to loans and debts. So when disputes arise, especially when large sums of money are involved, emotions run high. When he meets Teddy, he's not interested in being entertained. Teddy would tell me that some people would actually take the gambling a little too seriously. And there would be altercations. And of course, Teddy would have to calm everybody down and just be like, we're all here for fun. You know, he would try to diffuse the situation as much as he could. Teddy offers up a few drink and buffet tickets as a token of appreciation to his disgruntled guest. Teddy's gesture doesn't work as Bill rips up the tickets in front of him before going back to playing. Unruly customers are part of any cruise, but especially a gambling cruise like this one. Teddy often has to deal with people who are upset that they've lost a lot of money. To defuse the tension, Teddy announces a special contest for passengers on board. Teddy loved golf. I went out with him a few times, and I've never seen anybody hit the ball that far. It was just very impressive to see. Teddy announces to the crowd that if anyone can drive a golf ball off the side of the ship farther than he can, he'll give them $1,000. Teddy hits first to set the bar at an impressive estimated 240 yards. Bill is desperate to try to win his money back. He's lost a lot of money in the casino. So he steps up and he decides that he's gonna be the first one to take that shot. This is the type of guy Teddy is. He doesn't let grudges get in the way of his doing business. He doesn't hold on to personal vendettas. He's more than willing to let Bill take the shot. But Bill's swing cuts under the ball and sends it almost straight up and over the railing, drawing laughter from the crowd. Bill's anger forces Veronica to step in sending security to take Bill away. But unfortunately for Teddy, his good nature can't protect him from tragedy forever. Later that night, he's found lying in a pool of his own blood.
Theodore Teddy Waltz is the CEO and master of ceremonies of his own gambling pleasure cruise line. His wife and business partner, Veronica, works behind the scenes to make sure the cruise runs smoothly. But not everyone is interested in Teddy's charms, including Bill Wellesley, who's angry after big gambling losses. But despite Teddy's best attempts to smooth things over, Teddy's own luck runs out when he's found lying in a pool of his own blood in the bathroom. But how did this happen? Veronica is supervising the gambling hall when a passenger rushes in to yell that Teddy's been hurt. A man finds Teddy lying on the bathroom floor, bleeding from his head, and immediately goes to alert Veronica. Veronica and her security team enter the bathroom to find Teddy bleeding from his head. He's unconscious, but still alive. Veronica's medical staff rush to Teddy's injuries. Meanwhile, Veronica tells her staff to call the Coast Guard. Veronica and her security team immediately start asking if there were any witnesses who saw what happened. When a body is discovered in this fashion on a cruise ship, that's essentially a pretty stable environment. Given the amount of blood loss, the severity of the injury, it would indicate to me this wasn't a simple slip and fall. Unfortunately for Veronica, nobody's coming forward with information. For Veronica, the severity of Teddy's injury leads her to focus on the one person she thinks might have a reason to attack him. And the same person who had threatened him with the golf club earlier that evening. Veronica finds Bill Wellesley sitting at the bar and demands to know if he had anything to do with Teddy's injuries. Since Bill was really the only person on the boat who seemed to have a problem with Teddy, he's Veronica's number one suspect. She confronts him right away, but he's so inebriated, he doesn't even know what's going on. He has no clue what she's talking about. But when Veronica explains that Teddy was found bleeding from a head wound, Bill's true colors show through. When Bill hears what happened to Teddy, he says that even though he didn't kill Teddy, he wished he had, especially after all that money he lost. As Bill gets taken away, Coast Guard boards the ship, hoping to save Teddy's life. But the situation looks dire, and the head wound he sustained continues to bleed profusely. The Coast Guard police and paramedics climb aboard, and the paramedics fight to save Teddy to try and stop the bleeding from his head. Paramedics work frantically to save Teddy's life, but unfortunately, his injuries are so severe they can't stop the bleeding. After 20 minutes of emergency medical attention, Teddy is declared dead, leaving everyone questioning what happened for him to sustain such a horrific wound. When I found out Teddy was killed, I couldn't believe it. It was just, it was shocking. Who would do this? He just wanted to make people laugh. Arriving at the scene is Detective Maria Nichols. Detective Nichols consoles Veronica and says she'll do her best to find the person responsible for Teddy's death. As an investigator, you're not often the first person to come to a crime scene. Often it's been visited by first responders, it's been visited by witnesses. The people that were involved in the event itself have been there. So as an investigator, when you first walk into a crime scene, it's your opportunity to get your first impression of what may or may not have happened. Suddenly, Veronica emerges from the office with Detective Nichols behind her. Veronica announces to the group that tragically, her husband has died. 
someone has been attacked on board and you're stuck on this boat for hours. So imagine the panic you'd feel if you were in the situation. But the next to speak is Detective Nichols, who announces to the guests that while the ship may have arrived, all of them have to remain on the ship for questioning. Because Teddy's death has officially become a homicide investigation. Theodore Teddy Waltz is the CEO and master of ceremonies of his own gambling pleasure cruise line and lives to entertain. His wife and business partner, Veronica, is the brains of the operation, making sure every cruise runs smoothly. But when Teddy is found bleeding from a severe head injury on the bathroom floor, Veronica confronts the man she thinks could be responsible. Bill Wellesley, who's angry at Teddy after claiming to lose money to crooked card dealers. Bill denies involvement in Teddy's injuries, but drunkenly sneers to Veronica that he wishes he was the one who caused them. After the paramedics announce that Teddy has died from his injuries, Detective Maria Nichols assures Veronica she'll do her best to find the person responsible. For Detective Nichols and Veronica Waltz, it's going to be a long night. As passengers line up for questioning by the police, Veronica confides her suspicions to Detective Nichols. Veronica's still pretty positive that Bill is responsible for what happened to her husband. So she's pretty eager to reveal this to the detectives. However, they caution her that since it's early in the investigation, absolutely everyone is a suspect. While the Fort Lauderdale PD handle preliminary questioning of the crowd to try to find potential suspects, Detective Nichols wants to examine the crime scene to see if she can find any more clues. There are telltale signs when you're investigating the discovery of a body, especially when there's blood involved. Blood that has been present for some time tends to be much darker uh, in color, almost verging on black, tends to have coagulated or, or gelled to the point where it doesn't flow anymore, it becomes very sticky. If it's very recent, tends to still be flowing, could be very crimson in color. So there's an obvious difference between old blood and new blood. The first witness who found Teddy said he was motionless and bleeding. Detective Nichols also notes that the blood pattern on the floor shows signs that Teddy's head had impacted the floor with significant force before remaining motionless. Was it an attack, perhaps an argument, or a simple slip and fall. There are no other signs of a struggle anywhere in the bathroom. In fact, it's crystal clean. Did the killer clean up after themselves? Teddy was very professional. He didn't drink at all when he was working. So whenever he was entertaining, whenever they had a cruise, he only drank coffee or soda. Veronica lets the detective know this. There was absolutely no drugs or alcohol involved. For Detective Nichols, Teddy's death still poses a mystery, which means she'll have to dig further for more evidence. But when she asks Veronica about the ship's security camera system, she runs into the first sign of suspicious activity. Ironically, the one camera that would have shown what happened to Teddy is the only one on the ship that's broken. 
Even though this seems suspicious, Veronica told the detective that Teddy knew all about this, but he hadn't gotten it fixed. He didn't want to spend the money. Veronica, who was the head of security on Teddy's cruise ship, was aware that the camera wasn't working and had asked him to fix it, but he didn't want to spend the money on repairing that camera. It's around this time that detectives turned their attention to Veronica. Could she be the one responsible? Well, when you have a, an incident like this where one of the parties of a, a marriage goes missing or is murdered, the spouse is often considered a person of interest because they generally have the most to gain from this person no longer being in their life. Teddy and Veronica actually had a past. They have a history beyond just working together. And that makes Veronica one of the main suspects in this case. Veronica is adamant that Bill Wellesley is involved, reminding Detective Nichols that multiple witnesses saw him threaten Teddy earlier that evening. Meanwhile, Detective Nichols goes to question the passenger who last had a confrontation with Teddy. Bill maintains his innocence, saying he had nothing to do with Teddy's death. Bill's got the perfect alibi. Ship security was following him all night after the altercations with Teddy. So how could he have possibly done it? He always had someone watching him. He didn't leave the bar all night. But then Detective Nichols tells Bill something he doesn't know, something she's bluffing him on. He was seen on the ship's security cameras leaving the bar and heading to the bathroom 10 minutes before Teddy was found inside. Bill admitted he had gone into the same bathroom, but he didn't see Teddy, and the security still tailed him even in the bathroom. An investigator's role is to try to get the most accurate picture of what happened by any means necessary. So you would prefer not to have a person be intoxicated at the time they give you the statement. It's likely that the judge would determine that the amount of weight given to that person's testimony would be reflected in how intoxicated they may have been. The court may not assign it a lot of credibility. But then Detective Nichols notices marks on Bill's face. Could they be defensive wounds from Teddy trying to fight back? So Teddy wasn't a fighter, he was a performer. He'd rather throw a joke than a punch. It may seem suspicious that Bill has some bruising on his face, but he's got a great excuse for that too. He goes to a boxing gym. He's even able to show Veronica his card for the boxing gym. And he says he got them during a sparring match. Still, Detective Nichols decides to have the police arrest Bill as a possible suspect to keep him overnight for questioning in the morning. Even though he maintains he didn't do it and his alibi is great, the investigators can still hold him for up to 48 hours, just to give them a little more time. When Detective Nichols breaks the news to Veronica that Bill is unlikely to have been involved, she is shocked. Cruise ship CEO Theodore Teddy Waltz is found seriously injured in the bathroom of his cruise ship, only to die as a result of his injuries a few hours later. Teddy's wife, Veronica, believes passenger Bill Wellesley is responsible. But after an extensive interview, Detective Maria Nichols isn't convinced. The next person she wants to interview is the person closest to Teddy's heart, his wife and business partner, Veronica. Mm. 
Detective Nichols starts by telling Veronica to relax, reminding her she's not a suspect, and these questions are for informational purposes only. Investigative interviews can be very intimidating for somebody on the other side of the table. Frequently, they act out emotionally. They act out differently than they would normally behave because of the amount of stress they're under. They don't want to be caught in a lie if they're guilty, and they don't want to be associated with a crime if they're innocent. When investigators talk to Veronica, she tells them that she's the brains behind the ship. She's the one that actually runs everything. And she's as baffled as anyone else about how Teddy could have been murdered in the one spot on the ship where there was no camera. Then Detective Nichols asks Veronica if she can think of anyone who might have had a reason to kill Teddy. In most particular cases, homicides are the result of a motive like anger or jealousy or greed. But there's generally some emotional component to the crime that would indicate that there's a connection between the perpetrator and the victim. Veronica doesn't understand the question, so Detective Nichols clarifies. If Teddy dies, who gets control of the ship? Investigators ask Veronica who gets control of the ship now that Teddy has died, and she answers that it's her. She now owns everything. One of the key pieces of information to come out during the interrogation of Veronica is that she has a financial interest in this business. She stands to gain the business should Teddy die. Control over somebody's business after their death could certainly be considered a motive. But Detective Nichols is onto something. To the investigator's surprise, their perfect relationship wasn't all it seemed to be. In fact, Veronica knew that Teddy had been cheating on her throughout their marriage. It turns out that the lovable showman also loved flirting with his attractive guests. You know, I would see Teddy flirt with girls, but I always thought that was a part of his act, you know? I didn't think he was being serious. Jealousy is a very strong human emotion, and it's often the cause of uh, a lot of violence. In spite of this, in spite of how rocky things were, Veronica claimed she still loved Teddy too much to divorce him. If she'd wanted to, she would have simply left him. She never could have killed him. In Veronica's case, if Teddy was to die, she would take 100% control of this business. If they were to divorce, she would only get 50%. That's a huge motive to commit murder. Detective Nichols asks one more time if Veronica can think of anyone on board who might want to kill Teddy. But Veronica doubles down, saying she has no idea. Before Detective Nichols can wrap up the interview, she's interrupted by one of her police officers. Upon revealing security footage, investigators see something interesting. There was another man, an unknown man, who's seen going into the bathroom before Teddy and coming out after the altercation. Carl Robbins is an Orlando-based dentist who bought a solo ticket to tonight's cruise. Carl is the third suspect in this case, and he, we believe, was in love with Veronica. On top of that, he was the last person seen going into the bathroom where Teddy was known to be. Shockingly for Veronica, the strange man ends up being Carl, this stalker who's haunted her while they've been running these casinos on the boat. He was actually banned from the boat. So she's wondering, how on earth did he even get on the ship? Well, when we can talk to the 
the people who are purportedly the last to see somebody before they've gone missing. That gives us a point in time to work on in the investigation. Where were they before that? Where did they go after that? So these people are very important to the investigation. Veronica tells Detective Nichols that she has no idea how Carl made it past security. That police reveal Carl bought his ticket under a fake name and stolen credit card. Is it possible that Carl killed Teddy to get to Veronica? Or could there be more to Veronica and Carl's relationship than she's letting on? And what about Bill Wellesley, the drunken passenger who threatened Teddy with a golf club? Detective Nichols has some thinking to do and decides to bring both Veronica and Carl back to the police station to get more information and finally figure out, once and for all, who killed Teddy Waltz. Cruise ship CEO Theodore Teddy Waltz is found seriously injured in the bathroom of his cruise ship, only to die as a result of his injuries a few hours later. Detective Maria Nichols interviews Teddy's wife and business partner Veronica Waltz, who admits their relationship was rocky, but denied any involvement in his death. Instead, Veronica suggests blame should be placed on Bill Wellesley, a drunk passenger who threatens Teddy after gambling losses, claiming the ship's car dealers are cheats. But security tapes reveal that the person most likely responsible for Teddy's death is Carl Robbins, a dentist who claims to be in love with Veronica. Veronica has already filed a restraining order against Carl, but he buys a ticket under a fake name to get on board the ship. Detective Nichols decides to arrest all three to do a deeper interrogation to try to figure out how exactly Teddy died and who was responsible. Investigator narrows it down to three people, Veronica, Bill, and Carl. Between the three, one of them has to know what happened to Teddy. With her main suspects in custody, Detective Nichols gives permission to the PD to finally let the passengers disembark. They've been stuck on board for over nine hours and are elated to finally go home. With still no concrete evidence linking anyone to potential homicide, Detective Nichols knows she has a lot of work to do to find out what really happened to Teddy. Detective Nichols decides to go over the details one more time to see if there's anything she missed. Veronica's motive, if she killed her husband, is 100% stake in the cruise business. Money and the fact that the only camera near where the murder took place was disabled point to her as the culprit. And then there's Bill, the drunken passenger who wished Teddy dead. But being followed by security means eyes were on him at all times. It would be impossible for him to do it. Finally, Carl, the man who is infatuated with Veronica and is supposedly in the washroom around the same time as Teddy that fateful night. Despite Veronica's insistence that Bill killed her husband, the investigator decides to start with him because she's equally sure that he probably didn't. Bill and Teddy have a history, so he would have a reason for wanting Teddy out of the way. When Detective Nichols sits down with Bill, his angry attitude has changed. Detective Nichols asks Bill if he noticed Carl Robbins in the crowd anywhere over the course of the evening. 
Bill's testimony can't be purely trusted because he was drunk the night all of this went down. But he's pretty sure he saw a man fitting Carl's description throwing something overboard. So Bill, he did in fact see something. And he reported to investigators that he saw Carl going over by the rail and throw something overboard. Bill doesn't know what it was that Carl threw overboard, but it definitely is suspicious behavior. Carl's motive is that he loves Veronica and he wants Teddy out of the way so that he can be with Veronica. If he's not really interested in Veronica, but Veronica has the ability to take over Teddy's ship, eventually Carl could take over the ship himself if Veronica ends up with him. Finally, convinced that Bill is not responsible for Teddy's death, Detective Nichols releases him from custody. With the new information Bill provided, Detective Nichols doesn't waste any time and goes straight to Carl to ask what he dropped off the side of the ship. Carl confesses he threw a letter into the water while aboard the boat. It wasn't a love letter to Veronica. Carl admits that it was a letter to Teddy instead, revealing the fact that he'd been having an affair with Teddy's wife for over two years. Carl tells Detective Nichols that he came to the ship to give the letter to Teddy. He did feel betrayed and used by Veronica, and he wanted to get revenge on both of them by telling Teddy the truth once and for all. He claims that the reason why Veronica put a restraining order on him is so that Teddy wouldn't find out and file for divorce. He wanted to see the look on Teddy's face, but unfortunately, it didn't work out that way. Carl tells Detective Nichols he accidentally ran into Teddy in the bathroom. Carl, since he's this stalker that's been apparently banned from the boat, thinks Teddy will recognize him right away. Imagine his disappointment when Teddy has no idea who he is, and even has the audacity to make a joke about being married and how Carl's so lucky not to be a married man. It's then that Carl realizes that confronting Teddy just isn't worth it. So what we do know is that Carl essentially broke the law by breaching the conditions of his restraining order. But that doesn't point to the fact that he had anything to do with the attack on Teddy. Carl does admit, however, that he did consider killing Teddy, but he just didn't have the guts. It wasn't in him to do something like that. And while Veronica admits to her prior relationship with Carl, both of them deny being involved in Teddy's death. So who would have killed Teddy if it wasn't Bill, and it wasn't Carl, and it wasn't Veronica? Who was it? Thanks to the security camera footage placing Carl where Teddy was killed, on top of his history with Veronica, Detective Nichols decides to arrest and charge Carl Robbins with the second degree murder of Theodore Teddy Waltz. But the question now is, is there enough evidence for conviction? Robbins is awaiting trial for the murder of Theodore Teddy Waltz after Detective Maria Nichols discovers he had a romantic relationship with Teddy's wife, Veronica. Initially, investigators feel that Carl killed Teddy out of revenge. 
or maybe so he could be with Veronica forever with no impediment. Unfortunately for Detective Nichols, Carl's defense lawyers find their own justification for Teddy's fatal fall. At the end of all this, uh, the defense lawyer did find information by pulling the ship's cleaning log. A cleaner had in fact mopped the floor about 20 minutes before Teddy was seen going in there. Is it possible slippery floor conditions led to Teddy's unfortunate end. It looks like Teddy actually slipped and just died of an accident. At the end of the day, when you lack physical evidence and all you're left with are coincidences, it's not necessarily enough to be able to level an accusation at somebody. So we're left with just an accident, as improbable as it may be. The judge finds Carl Robbins not guilty for the death of Theodore Teddy Waltz. Instead, ruling it accidental. Nobody has ever been charged in Teddy's death. Seems strange to think that Teddy died of an accident, but until we get some other proof, that's how the story ends. It remains a mystery to this day. I still can't believe he's gone. You know? Teddy had so much to give. He was a funny, warm person. I miss him. For a man who brought joy to so many to have died so mysteriously, we'll always have people guessing what really happened to Teddy Waltz. To this day, Veronica believes that her husband was murdered. <laughs>